coming to you from the Big Island of Hawaii. It's the Songs and Stories Podcast. And now, here's your host, Steve Roby. Aloha. Welcome to a very special episode of Songs and Stories. I'm honored to have folk musician Tom Paxton as a guest today. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Where am I reaching you today? I am in Nashville, Tennessee. All right. How's it there? Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful fall afternoon. Sun shining, cool, gorgeous day. Sounds wonderful. So we're here to talk about your live stream show with the Don Juans coming up on Mo- Monday, October 5th. It's a special online concert presented by Blues Bear Hawaii. But before we get into that, uh, for our, our younger listeners, how would you introduce yourself? I would say that I'm a uh, in the folk music tradition. I'm in the tradition of uh, Pete Seeger, Woody Guthrie, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, John Denver. That That's the best way I would describe it. From that classic era of folk music. Yeah. What was it about folk music that first caught your interest and made you want to follow it? Well, it goes all the way back to my uh, to my youth. Uh, as, as a kid, I would hear a song on the radio by uh, Burl Ives uh, singing uh, the Blue Tail Fly, Jim and Crack Corn and I Don't Care. And, uh, and uh, that cracked me up, no pun intended. Um, I liked story songs. Uh, the Fox Went Out on a Chilly Night. Just simple, simple songs like Buffalo Gal, won't you come out tonight? Come out. I just, they appealed to me and I, I didn't know you called them folk songs, but, uh, you know, we'd, we'd have songs like that in school. When I was in the second grade, um, I did a dance in, in, uh, in the assembly with Paula Bush and Eileen Sherrod. I still remember their names. And we sang Buffalo Gals, Won't You Come Out Tonight, and danced around and wound up tangled up in the curtain and wound up behind the curtain. And and I have tried very hard never to make that mistake again. <laughs> All right. Good for you. <laughs> I I guess if we had cell phones back then, that would that, that would have gone viral. <laughs> it would have. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, some of your other songs uh, tend to have a political theme. What's your take on the current climate in America prior to this upcoming presidential election we have? It's extremely tense, if you ask me. We have we have a president whose entire thrust is to divide uh, and insult, dominate. He, he's like no president we've ever had. He really is an autocrat. He, he wants to rule rather than preside. Right, we saw that in the um, debate a few nights ago. Yeah, it it was. I just I I was working, so I didn't see the debate. Thank God. But I've I've, I've seen some of the aftermath of it, and and uh, and it, it was it was a uh, it was horrible. And so that's what we've got. Um, if I were talking to telling this to someone from another country, I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to describe it. I don't think we've ever had anything like this before. Yeah, I've never seen it either, yeah. Uh, Still on a serious note here, uh, since COVID-19 hit back in March, uh, many of the major venues have closed and performers are now doing online shows. Uh, What's your experience been like doing them? Well, it's been fun. I've I've really, I didn't know if I would enjoy it, Uh, but but I have. I mean, I seem to be able to... uh, look at a camera and, and see one person and perform for that one person. And, uh, it's, it's come quite, quite easily. And we just, we're just sailing along, having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, on the 25th of October, uh, we will do our first live show since March the 10th. Uh, we're going to play in, in my hometown of Alexandria, Virginia. There is a a large, wonderful club called Birchmere, where I've been playing since 1980. And um, they have got um, a space seating set up. They've, it's, I think about 25% of capacity is all they allow. And we will be performing for a live audience, and I can't wait. All right. 
<laughs> it can it can be done, I guess. Yeah. It can. Wow. Have you ever played Hawaii? I have never played Hawaii. I've been in Hawaii twice on vacation and once at a conference, but I've never played there. So this uh, up, upcoming show will be a first. It will be. And we, you know, we have to work out an in-person thing. Uh, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'd love to have you back here or love, love to have you perform here as well. Yeah. Hey, when, uh, I was in, when I interviewed you back in, uh, 2015, I was looking back at, uh, some of my old hard drives today. Uh, it was at a Berkeley show at the Freight and Salvage and you were playing with Janice Ian and during that interview, you announced you were never going to do another tour and that this was your final tour. What made you want to get back on the road? Oh, I th- my retirement lasted about 15 minutes. <laughs> when I was in the second grade in Chicago, I appeared in some play uh, uh, as Uncle Sam. You know, I had the uh, striped pants and, and, the, and the, co- the cotton goatee and the hat and the... Uh, Everybody applauded, and I thought to myself, I like this. I want more of this. And I've been a ham ever since. I enjoy performing. I take it seriously. I think it's a, it's a, it's something that deserves the best effort you can give it. And uh, I would miss it terribly if I didn't do it. As, as one other performer once said, you know, we do this because it keeps us sane. We we need that to complete whatever the circuit is in us. So I mean, I thought I was just going to stay home and 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 maybe write, you know. Except, but I'm a I'm a musician and a performer, and I will do it until it makes no sense to do it. Mm. I've done it now for sixty years. Uh, September was my sixtieth anniversary performing. Good for you. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Hey, for the musical part of the show, I'd like to ask our guests about the backstories be- uh, behind some of their songs. I've got Ramblin' Boy queued up and another one, which I'll play later in the show. But uh, first, can you tell us what's the story about Ramblin' Boy? When I wrote it, I wrote it in 63, and I was working almost full time uh, at the Gaslight and McDougal Street in Greenwich Village. And uh, lots of us were working there. It was a real starting place. Dylan started there, Phil Oaks, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Bill Cosby started there, actually. There was a song that my friend Dave Van Ronk, uh, who was uh, my best man when I married my wife, Midge, Dave Van Ronk and Bob Dylan were, were each singing an old traditional song called He Was a Friend of Mine. And it went, he was a friend of mine. He was, and it was a beautiful song that moved me. And about a month after I had heard them sing it for the first time, I was at the gaslight and I had a little pocket notebook and I was writing lyrics in it. And that night I wrote three lyrics and the first and third ones were really terrible. Trust me, terrible. And the middle one was Ramblin' Boy. And I, I realized that when I wrote Ramblin' Boy, I, what I would really was doing was writing my version of He Was a Friend of Mine. Because it's, it's the same sentiment. Actually, uh, at a later date, Dave Van Rock recorded uh, Ramblin' Boy with me. Yeah, we did it as a duet. There, there have been several covers uh, of the song too, right? Oh, yeah, many covers. Pete Seeger did it. Porter Wagner did it. Interesting. Well, let's give Ramblin' Boy by Tom Paxton a listen here on Songs and Stories. He was a man and a friend always. He stuck with me in the hard old days. He never cared if I had no dough We rambled round in the rain and snow And here's to you, my rambling boy May all your rambling bring you joy Here's 
here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. In Tulsa town, we chanced to stray. We thought we'd try to work one day. The boss said he had room for one. Says my old pal, we'd rather bum. And here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. Here's to you. Late one night in a jungle camp, the weather it was cold and damp. He got the chills and he got 'em bad. They took the only friend I had, and here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. Here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. He left me here to ramble on. My rambling pal is dead and gone. If when we die we go somewhere, I'll bet you a dollar he's rambling there. And here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. Here's to you, my rambling boy. May all your rambling bring you joy. Like what you've heard so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks for your support. Now back to the show. And we're back with Tom Paxton here on Songs and Stories. Tom, tell me about the Don Juans, who are part of your live stream show coming up on October fifth. How did you guys meet and decide to do this virtual tour? Well, the, the Don Juans are John Vesner and Don Henry. Uh, they've been friends for oh thirty years. And uh, in 1991, they wrote a song called uh, Where Have You Been, which was a huge hit, country hit, for Kathy Matea, who is John's wife. So they, they've been writing together off and on for a long, long time. And then uh, I, met, I met Don Henry about 20 years ago when he played in New York, and I just, just to meet him that night, that, uh, it was a very uh, sketchy uh, beginning, but uh, I met John John Vesner when I was down here for a little songwriting uh, several years ago, and once again that was a very quick meeting. And then we met for sure at the Swannanoa Gathering, which is a, uh, a five week long uh, folk music uh, school, if you will, in the summer in North Carolina at uh, Swannanoa. And one of those weeks is called Contemporary Week. And both John and I were teachers. Uh, we, we actually teach there every summer 
for a week. And I did a special concert there uh, uh, one summer when I wasn't on the, on the faculty. I came down and did a concert. And after it, John said uh, that he wanted to write with me. And so I said, let's do that. Sure. So we wrote a couple of songs together, which I liked a lot. And he then said that he had that he and Don uh, were the Don Juans and they were going out and doing shows together. And they would like to open shows for me and then play with me. And I said, well, that sounds like a terrific idea. Let's do that. So we played our first date together in Asheville, North Carolina. And uh, they did about three or four songs, and then I came on, and, and they began to play with me. And after about the third song, I thought to myself, write it very clearly. This is not; uh, these are not side men. Mm. This is this is a trio, and there's a big difference. Mm. They are they are equal partners on stage. It's uh, it's not me and two guys. It's the three of us. Uh, at least that's the way I see it, mm-hmm. and and that's how we got started. We uh, we've been touring together now for uh, oh, three or four years, and and uh, I've had him with me twice um, uh, in England, and uh, once we played in uh, in uh, Copenhagen and Oslo as well, mm. which was great fun. Mm-hmm. And we we tour quite a bit, which suits me down to the ground. We just we uh, fly someplace and pick up a, a minivan, and uh, the gypsies are here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys uh, put out a live album lo- last year, didn't you? We did, yeah. That's cool. So if people want to get a preview of the show, they can uh, listen or download the uh, the album uh, online. I guess, yeah. And on YouTube, if you go to YouTube, Tom Paxton and the Don Ones, you can find an animated version of a song we wrote about global warming. It's pretty funny, is what it is. I, I mean, beautifully done. The guy that's uh, John found him online and asked him if he would uh, do our song called uh, "What's So Bad About That," and the guy just did a gorgeous, funny, funny version of it. All right. I'm sure our listeners will check that out. Hey, I understand you do a uh, Q&A section after uh, your live stream shows. What do most people want to know? What are What's a common question? Well, they ask kind of predictable questions like, what's, you know, what's my favorite song that I've written? And, and uh, when are we going to do another record? And, and um, stuff like that. Then if someone asked me about the guitar, and they might ask about a particular song. Lot, lots of times they just want to comment and say that they enjoyed the show and everything, which pleases me no end. How does how does that work? Do they type in their question uh, since it's on, online show? Yeah, they type they type in the question. Mm. Okay, and you guys have a screen and you you read the question. And we we have a we have a person uh, in the in the studio with us who reads us the questions and then we, then we respond. Ah, okay. It's a little different format than your, your regular live venue concert show yeah but it's just well in the in the regular concerts they do that in the lobby when we're out you know signing cds and everything there we answer questions then too yeah the meet and greets yeah i like that a lot yeah i don't know if we'll see that again for a long time but (laughs) they were fun hey let's uh jump back into your music uh you did a song called did you hear john hurt would you like to talk about that one i'd love to john mississippi john hurt uh made some recordings back in 1928 for the OK label, which was a you know black owned and black artists, and it was mostly blues. When the depression came, all those little companies disappeared, and most of the artists were never heard from again. But uh, John's recordings were were kind of prized, and they were in you know a lot of good collections. Uh, and so uh, in 1963. Uh, a young folk song collector named Tom Hoskins um, had a hunch and drove down to Avalon, Mississippi. There'd been a John Hurt song called Avalon's My Hometown, Avalon on My Mind. And he went down to Avalon, which is about as big as the room you're sitting in, and found John. And John was still still had a guitar of sorts and was playing. 
And the word got out, and the Newport Foundation uh, folk folk music concert, uh, the uh, festival, Newport Folk Festival, brought him up that summer of 63 to the festival, where by great good fortune, I was from the first time, and I got to hear John Hurt sing in the North for the first time in his life. And he sang in a workshop in the afternoon, and that night, they put him on stage in front of 18,000 people. And, and he sat there on a kitchen chair like he always did, <clears throat> sang the songs he'd always sung, and just absolutely wowed everybody. And then, by I don't know how it happened, uh, just a few weeks later, he came and joined us kids at the Gaslight on McDougal Street in Greenwich Village and stayed with us for a couple of weeks. We got to hear him three or four times a night, which was just magic for us. And uh, about 10 years after he passed, a song pretty much in his style showed up in the back of my head, and it turned out to be this one. Did you hear John Hurt? All right. Well, let's give it a listen to now here on Songs and Stories. It was a frosty night It was beginning to snow And down the city streets The wind began to blow We all came to the cellar We all emptied the bar To hear a little old fella I play a shiny guitar Did you hear John Hurt Play the Creole bell The Spanish Fandango that he loves so well Did you love John Hurt? Did you shake his hand? Did you hear him sing his candy man? Oh, did you hear him sing his candy man? Straight back chair with his felt hat on. He took a lot of fancy with his Avalon. And everybody passing down McDougal Street. I cocked your heads and listened to the tapping feet. Did you hear John Hurt play the Creole bell? The Spanish Fandango. That he loves so well Did you love John Hurt? Did you shake his hand? Did you hear him Sing his candy man? Did you hear him Sing his candy man? My Creole bell I love her well My darling baby My Creole bell stars to shine then she'll be mine my darling baby my queer bell it was a frosty night it was beginning to snow and now the city streets the wind began to blow we all came to the cellar we all emptied the bar to hear a little old fella I play your shiny guitar Did you hear John Hurt Play the Creole bell The Spanish Fandango That he loves so well Did you love John Hurt Did you shake his hand Did you hear him Sing his candy man Did you Thank you. Songs and Stories introduces the podcast listener voicemail. 
If you have a show suggestion or guest you'd like to see interviewed, give us a call now at 318-500-3582 and leave us a message. Be sure to tell us where you're calling from. If we like what we hear, we might air it on a future episode. Thanks for listening. And now back to the show. And we're back with our special guest today, Tom Paxton. Uh, One of our readers sent in a question and wanted to know, what advice would you uh, have for someone starting out interested in folk music uh, today? Well, it's a broad question they're asking. Uh, I'd have to ask them a few questions Mm. uh, to to make sure that I knew what they wanted to know. Um, If they just want to learn folk music, there are just thousands of recordings now. And YouTube, of course, is is absolutely packed with uh, free guitar lessons, Mm, uh, banjo lessons, anything uh, to get you going. It's it's uh, hit and miss uh, of learning songs, finding songs that you like, and and maybe uh, maybe you can find uh, a real life uh, instructor around you who teaches guitar or something and can get you going. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're interested in writing, I would ask you know how serious how seriously interested you are because if you're really interested in songwriting, you have to be. This is Tom talking. You have to be in New York, Nashville, or Los Angeles, mm. and no other place. You've got to be where it's going on so that your hanging out is done with other songwriters. Ah, okay. Yeah. It, it's not a job. It's a profession. It's a calling. Uh, it's a, it's 24-7 right. kind of a deal. Uh, the first year that I was in New York, uh, I was on a stage singing without getting paid most of the time. Uh, I would say um, 325 days out of the year, I was actually I, I was on the scene. I was with other folk singers. I was singing. I was learning guitar licks. Uh, it was full immersion. Hmm. So I suspect that the person who asked the question is not that serious because it, it is a whole life. Be sure to find friends who also play and want to learn. Learn from each other. It just helps so much to be doing it with others, learning from others, hanging out where people are performing. Mm. Get to know them. Write songs with them. If you want to write songs, find someone who's writing songs already and ask them if they'd write a song with you. Great advice, Tom. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, let's uh, let's get back to talking about your uh, live stream show before we have to wrap up today. Uh, what can fans look forward to? Uh, give me just kind of a brief overview of what the show is like. Mm-hmm. There are there are some of the very old songs because. Uh, I respect the audience's desire to hear those old songs. So there are some of them. uh, And there are um, several of the songs the guys and I have written together, uh, some of which are funny, some of which are um, serious. And there are some recent songs that I wrote on my own. So it's pretty, it's pretty pure, pretty pure Paxton. Yeah. Sounds like a good mix. Yeah. uh, I, I hope that's what they want. But that's what they get. <laughs> Talking about your music, is your website tompaxton.com uh, the best it is. the best place to send folks to find your music? Yes, or my Facebook page. Okay, and is there a special name to your Facebook page, or just Tom Paxton? Or? Just Tom Paxton. Oh, yeah, easy. Um, I must warn everybody that I don't run that page. I don't know how to, so I have a guy who does it for me, but. Whatever goes on there will eventually reach me. All right, good place to start, especially in the, the so- yeah. social media days where we're we're online. I know all the time. Do but you, listen, yeah. Steve, I, I go back. I go back to tube radio, and uh, <laughs> this I'm not qualified for. I mean, I I have an iPhone which I can actually use, but I don't understand it. <laughs> it's so it, for me to run a Facebook page. Get out of here! I yeah, right. <laughs> hopeless. I don't. Hopeless. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah. Hey, um, I'll put the details for Monday's concert in the show description for the podcast. 
But Great. I'd like to tell our listeners, too, you can also go to bluesbearhawaii.com to pick up a ticket. I think tickets are only 15 bucks and yep. uh, great family entertainment sit around the uh, computer, or if you can live stream it on your TV, uh, can watch a, a live show for exclusively for uh, fans of yours uh, here in Hawaii. Yeah, that's great. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Well, thanks for being a guest on songs and stories, Tom. Aloha. And You're very welcome. I hope someday we can see each other again face to face. You bet. All right. Aloha. Bye, Tom. Aloha. Hey, Big Island music fans. If you're enjoying this episode, be sure to subscribe and share the podcast on your favorite social media channels. For more about what we do, visit us online at bigislandmusic.net. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Songs and Stories podcast. Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. We'll see you next week on Songs and Stories. Aloha.